Today we are going to be talking about string buffer and string builder in Java. This is very important because you will meet it in any quiz on Java. So the problem is string has issue of being immutable, meaning that you can't change a string. If you change a string, it doesn't actually work. So let's try it. Let's change this Java and see that it doesn't actually work. So I'm going to replace the A in Java with O. So instead of Java, I'll have Jovo. So let's do it and let's see along the line that it doesn't really change. You can't actually do this. So if I say something like system.out.print, and I'm going to say str.replace, and I'm replacing A with a new character O. Okay, right? I'll recommend you also do this yourself so that you actually see how it works. So I'm replacing A with an O, and then I'm going to run it. Now you can see that it prints out Jovo. But the question is, have we changed this string? The answer is no, it did not change. The reason is, if I print it out again, if I print out str, let's see if it's Jovo or Java. So you see that it is still Java. We did not actually succeed in changing it. So that is why we say strings are immutable. You can't really change it. If you change it, it doesn't really change. We actually just printed out uh, something uh, using the print statement, but it doesn't change uh, the content of the string. So that is why we say strings are immutable. You can't change a string. And that is why Java have given us two classes. That is the string buffer class and the string builder class. These two are basically the same, but take note of the difference String buffer is trade safe. It's trade safe means that you can invoke two traits on it and it's called it's being it's trade safe or it is synchronized. String builder, on the other hand, is faster in performance than a string buffer. So for most of the time, you are going to be using string buff, string builder because it's faster in performance. Only when there is trade safety requirement, that is when you'll be required to use a string buffer. So we're actually going to be using string builder. Every other method about string buffer, the syntax that are between string buffer and string builder, every other thing is the same. So these are the things you need to know. I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel so that you actually get updates when I make new lessons and also get notified when uh, I make new lessons and also you encourage me to continue making these lessons. So we are going to use string builder or string buffer but let's focus on string builder. I tell you they are the same. Uh, technically or by the syntax, they are the same. Let's use a string builder to create a string and we can modify it and see that it actually works. All right, so let's start by creating a string. So instead of using string, string, let's say string builder str is equal to this time you are going to use a constructor uh, using the new uh, the new new keyword and new string builder and give it whatever you want. So basically, this is how you create a new string. So string builder. Okay. So this is how you create a new string builder. So if I actually print out what is there. STR, so you see that it's going to give us Java, right? So STR now holds Java. Now I'm going to replace Java, the A with an O, right? So let's see how it works. Or maybe let's start with the first method called append. So I'm going to append the word tutorials at the end of the string. So let's say, uh, let's say STR, or let's say system, str dot append. So what we want to append is tutorials. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I've appended tutorial and let's see how it works. So I'm going to just print it out on the screen. STR. So let's see. So if I run this code, you see that it prints out Java tutorial. Actually, I'm going to remove. Okay, uh, maybe you can allow it to be there. 
So the append actually appends a new string at the end of a string buffer object. So when we have the string str is actually an object of the string buffer class. So we use append to append whatever you want at the end of a string buffer object. So you can see that it works, it's modifiable, unlike string that is imitable. Let's try to reverse it now. So I'm going to reverse it by using the reverse uh, uh, the reverse method. So if I say str.reverse, and I'm going to give it, st, uh, that's all, str.reverse, that is what you need. So I'm going to just print it out, and I'm going to print str. So now, if, if I call this method str.reverse, it reverses it like inverting the arrangement of the characters in the string. So I'm going to run it, and you can see that it gives us something strange. Uh, L, A, I, blah, blah, blah. So it reverses it and gives us uh, the reverse uh, sequence. So what nice, we have delete, but before I use delete, I'm going to call the reverse a second time to reverse it back to how it was. So I'm going to display it. So now it's reversed back again because I'm calling the reverse method on a reversed one. So the first time we call it, it reverses it like upside down. And the second time we call it, it turns it back to the way it was originally. So that is how the reverse method works. Let's now use delete method to delete Java and we only have tutorial is going to be left. Remember, the best way to handle this is to do it yourself and you'll be able to appreciate how it works. I'm just going to say str.delete and I'm going to start from index 0 because this is index 0 of the Java tutorial. This is index 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, let's try to delete 4 items to go from index 0 to 4. So I'm going to run it, it says we have an error, so I need to use a semicolon, so I'm going to run it, and now you have, okay, I've not printed it, so now what is going to happen is it's going to delete Java from there, because Java is the first four items, so delete actually deletes items from index 0 to 4. So you can see what is left there is tutorial because Java has actually been deleted. Let's try going from index 1 to 4. So index 1 to 4 actually leaves the J in there and deletes only A, V, A, right? So actually this is not inclusive. So what it means is that if we are deleting from 0 to 4, it deletes 0, 1, 2, 3. That is what happens. So I'm going to run it again and you see that it actually works. The next thing we are going to do is to use insert statement to insert an item uh, inside the string in a particular position, right? So the insert uh, method inserts an item, inserts an item, a string S into the position specified by the offset. So let's see how it works. So let's say str.inserts. So str.insert, we have a offset from 0 to what? To 5. Okay, so. Sorry. So we actually, we actually need to give where we want to start the insertion, so from zero, what we want to insert, uh, we want to insert, uh, let's say, let's say C++, so I'm moving to C++ at this point. So if we now display the string at this point, as, uh, using the print statement, str, so let's see what actually displays there. So now you can see that it now replaces, uh, inserts an item there. As it inserts an item, it, 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 does, it doesn't actually overwrite what is there. 
let me show you because we already deleted an item here so let's insert back java at item 0 all right so i'm inserting back java so now i'm going to insert this time i'm going to insert c++ so i'm going to insert from index 0 and i'm going to insert c++ all right so what is going to happen is going to shift the java a little bit and insert this item as you can see okay now i'm going to display system so str so you can see that it shifts the java a bit and inserts the item there so that is how the insert statement works so how many have we covered we've covered append append you append at the end of a string Look at insert as the opposite of append. You insert at the beginning of a string or at a particular offset you want. Reverse reverses a string the other way around. Delete, delete an item from a string given a start position and an end position. Let's now use the next one, which is replace, which is actually the last one uh, we are going to use. So now that we have C++ Java tutorial, I'm going to kind of uh, replace all of these starting from index 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So from 0 to 7, I'm going to replace everything there, the C++ Java, I'm going to replace it maybe using AngularJS. So let's see how it works, str.replace. And we are going to start from 0, moving to 7, and the string we want to re uh, uh, replace what we want to insert in, in there is uh, angular js so at this point if i display the string so str you see that it's going to replace all of that with angular js you see so basically this is how the string buffer and the string builder work so one thing I want to show you is that both of them are about the same thing. So if I go ahead, if I go ahead to this place to change it to string buffer, and I change this to string buffer, so you see that everything is in place. Nothing goes wrong because uh, the string buffer and string builder are actually the same. So it actually still works without any error. Just give a second. Okay. So if I go ahead to run it, everything runs perfectly. So you can actually use stream buffer and stream builder interchangeably, except that in a quiz you might be asked what is the difference. Remember the difference is that stream buffer is faster, sorry, stream buffer is trade safe and is also synchronized. And stream builder is faster than stream buffer. I'd like to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to also remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. And also, maybe if you have some challenges, leave a comment there for me telling me what challenges you have. And I'm sure to respond to you. And also, look in the description box. box you'll see uh, an explanation, a link to this website where I have this explanation uh, for you very clear. So you can actually have code to play around what we've written. You can copy it from here uh, free. And use it to play around. So I'd like to thank you for viewing.